Good afternoon, happy Good Friday, and welcome to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. I'm Chase Hartzell, joined by Isaac, and Isaac, it is always a great day for baseball at Rav Rogers Field, but we've got a special treat this weekend. It's a matchup between two of the top teams in the GAC, two teams tied, in fact, for the top seed in the conference at the moment. It's the visiting SAU Mule Riders and the hometown Washita Tigers. Yeah, Chase, this is going to be a really, this has been a really anticipated matchup for a while now because of SAU's, SAU is all tied at the top of the conference with Washita and then two other teams. So it's going to be interesting to watch, especially because we have seen these two teams face off at, in a midweek game before. So it's going to be interesting to see three, them play three games in a row this weekend. This is a series that our friends at D2 Baseball have voted the series to watch this weekend across all of the country really speaks volumes about the matchup that we are about to see here today. These are two teams that know each other very well. And in the last couple of years, they've been no strangers to playing each other with postseason stakes on the line. Not only in the regular season in terms of trying to earn that seating for the tournament, but they've met each other in the GAC tournament on a handful of occasions as well. And another another thing to look at going into this game is going to be the Washita Tigers and their ability to uh, hit home runs because they are top in the conference in that, and that's going to be really interesting to watch as well, especially with um, with you know, you have Bermudez and Canones and G. Allen, all three of them, um, you know, being very good at the plate, shoot uh, hitting. So, but you also can't forget about this pitching staff, which currently leads the Great American Conference in earned run average. And the big story going into today's game, Cooper Timmons. You could witness him make history today. He is currently tied with Steve Smith for Washita's all-time strikeout record at 313. He needs one more punch out to put him alone at the top of Washita's all-time career list. What a career it has been for the senior from League City, Texas. And he's got a chance to put another flourish on his resume here today. But he's also going to have a great matchup against a pitcher who has established himself as not only one of the best pitchers in the GAC, but in this whole part of the country. Jeremy Adorno, the 2022 GAC Pitcher of the Year, starting on the mound today for the Mule Riders. His numbers a little bit higher than we're accustomed to seeing going into, to, into these matchups, but at the same time, this is a pitcher that has a resume that speaks for itself, but also one that you know can pull a gem any give, at any given time. Adorno has been a has been a quality pitcher in this conference for a couple of years now. You know, starting actually was pitcher of the year in the conference just about two seasons ago. But standing on the season with 59 strikeouts and um, a three and three record with a 4.18 ERA, he's going to be really he's going to be really it's going to be really interesting to watch him go against the talented hitters on the Washita side. For right now, SAU is currently mired in an uncharacteristic slide to say the least they are currently on a four game losing streak and according to the research by our athletic communications director here at Washita Brian Ramsey that's the first time that the mule riders have lost four in a row since 2002 if the Tigers can pull off a victory in game one it'll be SAU's first five game losing skid since 1990 that's nearly three and a half decades without losing five games in a row speaks to the quality of this SAU program that is no stranger to GAC titles and especially the postseason just a couple of years ago in Cary, North Carolina for the College World Series. Well, it's just going to cement the fact that in Southern Arkansas and Division II, we have just some of the most talented baseball teams in the country. Um, you have you have Harding, you have Washita, and now you have SAU. And with them being on a four-game losing streak, that is going. This is going to be some. This series is going to be something they are very focused on, just because they don't want to make this a habit and don't want to start off uh, just another yet another series with a bad with a bad um, things on their hands. So it's going to be really interesting to watch them play today, just maybe with a little bit of urgency, just because of their skid right now. Well, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the Great American Conference standings and. As you see the standings pop up on your screen, you will be able to see that Washita and Southern Arkansas are two of four GAC members currently tied for first place. Harding is also a member of that group. The Tigers will take them on next week. And then North, or excuse, Arkansas Monticello, who the Tigers beat two games to one earlier in the season right here at Rab Rogers Field, also tied for first place. Northwestern Oklahoma State and Arkansas Tech, along with Henderson State, 
having a share of fifth place. And Oklahoma Baptist, who swept SAU just a week ago, is currently in the eighth spot with a 10 and eight record. But Isaac, you look at these records. Two games separate first place from eighth place, the last qualifying spot for the tournament. This conference has been competitive this year, to say the least. It's just it's just D2 baseball for you, and that's just a GAC for you. It's been like that for a couple years now, and this year is no different, especially with all the talent in this conference. It's going to be it's going to be like that. I feel like until the play until we get to playoff time, but with this one, it's going to be. Just yet another matchup between two giants. You have you have Washita bringing it. You have Washita coming in off of a couple midweek wins, and then you have SAU coming in off a couple losses. So either you will see desperation from the SAU side, like I was saying, or you will see the Tigers bring in momentum, like they have in a couple series this season. Well, looking at the Tigers, the last couple of series in Great American Conference play have both been sweeps, starting right here at Rab Rogers Field a couple weeks ago when the Tigers took down the ECU Tigers three games to none. And then last weekend, it was a slugfest for the Tigers in Durant, Oklahoma, scoring double-digit runs in all three of those games. And the big story had to be Michael Quinones. Quinones ends up earning GAC Player of the Week honors after recording four home runs in Durant, including the first three-homer game by Washita Tigers since 2008. That feat was last achieved by Destin McConan. And then just this week, he followed up with three home runs and a double header against UAM. So folks, that is seven home runs in his last five games out. You didn't hear that wrong. It is indeed seven home runs in his last five games out. What a stretch it has been for the catcher from Phoenix, Arizona. And today he is one half of a battery that will be looking to make history as Cooper Timmons will be looking to set a new school record for career strikeouts. Well, Quinones is a player that started off the season a little bit slow coming into the season with an injury. But then, you know, like, like we've been talking about, this past week and a half has just been electric for the catcher as he's coming into this game with leading the team in home runs and also RBIs. So it's going to be, let's see if he, we'll love to see if he can continue this momentum into this game or if we're going to see just a lower scoring game than we've seen in the past. Well, at this time, we're going to turn it over to the public address system for the prayer and the national anthem. David Sharp. Let's pray. Father, we, we pause and we thank you for the day. We thank you for the beauty of it. We thank you for these uh, team members and these two institutions, the competitiveness that they have. Pray for safety as they compete. Lord, we especially want to thank you for this weekend and what it means in our lives. The fact that you did come to this earth to live, to teach us to live and die for us. Pray for a good weekend. Pray for safety for all. In your name I pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we honor America and those who serve it.
who hit it high into the air in shallow right field. Lyles is going to call off the second baseman Burroughs and he makes the play for out number three. The Tigers are set down in order to finish off the first inning of play as we head to the second. We're still scoreless here on Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Uh, I've heard people say, oh, a cheetah. Oh, Wichita. At Chita. Oh, a cheetah. Is it pronounced oh, a cheetah? Searching for Washita Baptist University. <laughs> Back in Texas, everybody pronounces it Wichita, but really, it's Washita. 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 How would you pronounce it? Washita. Washita. It's Washita Baptist University. Get it right. It's Washita, people. It's Washita. Washita. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. We are scoreless after one inning of play. Perhaps no surprise when you're considering that we're watching the teams with the two lowest earned run averages that the conference has to offer. But these are also two of the best lineups that the GAC has to offer, so we'll see which side prevails in the end. And the story in this inning is going to be the same as always until he gets that, that first strike out of the game. It's going to be... Pitcher Cooper Timmons looking for that first strikeout of the game, putting it at number 314 for his Washita career and putting him in first place all time in career strikeouts. And we'll be excited to see. He didn't get it in the first, but we'll be excited to see here if he can get it in the bottom of the, in the top of the second inning. He tied the record in his performance against Southeastern back in Durant last week. That tied him with Steve Smith, who is in attendance today to watch Cooper Timmons break the record. Here's the first pitch from Timmons. Runs inside, and it is now 1-0 to the leadoff batter of the inning. That is the third baseman, Jaden Woolbright. Woolbright is a 319 batter on the year. He's homered four times and he's also driven in 22 runs he's going to send this ball into the air but it should be playable for G Allen indeed it is routine play for the Tiger left fielder and there's quickly one away in the inning left fielder, Trace Shoe. so with one down here in the top of the second we will see Trace Shoop at the dish for the Mule Riders SAU did strike for two hits in the top of the second inning or excuse me, in the top of the first inning. However, one base runner was eliminated on an excellent pickoff by Cooper Timmons, and the other was stranded on first base. Here's the 1-0. Squares it up pretty well, but it has also hit well foul. Had home run distance, but instead it is going to fall out in front of the football offices out there in left field. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Slider misses outside, and now it is 2-1 to Timmons. The next pitch pops it up, but should be playable. It's short. Bermudez is under it, and he will make the play for round number two. Seeing a lot of flyouts today, especially last inning where Wash all three of the outs for Washita in their um, offensive side of the inning were flyouts. So with two away, we will now see the, the designated hitter for SAU. That is Carter Clarehout, and he is going to be down in the hole, oh, or excuse me, down 0-1 in the count. Timmons looking to put him in a hole with another good pitch right here. The 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two. The freshman DH is in trouble, and Timmons is on the cusp of history. Here we go, Chase. This could be history here. Timmons sets. Here's his 0-2. Misses outside for a ball. Quinones likes the location, trying to get the freshman to chase. But he's going to give it a stone-cold take. Once again, the fans on the edge of their seat. 
They know what's at stake here. The one-two from the senior skips to home plate and it is now two and two. Clowerhout not wanting to be a footnote in history. He's wanting to battle back here and at least put the ball in play. We'll see what Timmons dials up with the two-two count. The next pitch almost caught the corner, but it did just stay a bit outside. It's three and two. Kinone's motions to the umpire there saying that it may have been a strike there. Something's got to give the payoff pitch. Locks him up on the outside corner for strike three. And Cooper Timmons stands alone at the top of the mountain. He is now Washita's all-time strikeout king. Without strikeout, Washita pitcher Cooper Timmons has now set a school record for career strikeouts, 314. You just heard it on the public address system. The magic number was 314, and Cooper Timmons has achieved it. Not only that, but he does it against one of the top teams in the Great American Conference to finish off a 1-2-3 in it. We say congratulations to Cooper Timmons, and welcome back to Steve Smith. Steve Smith also in the building. Steve Smith is in the building with us today, and we're going to see if we can track him down. Camera's currently seeking him out. I believe he may be just off the camera. There you can see him right there at the top of your screen, just barely. He's got the black shirt on with the sunglasses. Sitting behind some SAU fans there on the second row. Steve Smith, another legendary name in Washita's history. He was the NCAA Men's College World Series for Division II MVP when the Tigers made it all the way to the national title game in 2008. Part of the winningest team in Washita history. And here you see a Washita team that's trying to mimic exactly what he did just around 20 years ago with a very similar success as, the, as they sit at the top of the conference. Mikey Quinones digging in. The Tigers, it's actually fitting that Cooper Timmons is the man to break the record because he was part of the team that was the first team to reach the NCAA tournament for Washita since that national title appearance. The Tigers making that first appearance and ending a 14-year drought back in 2022. Washita has since made it back-to-back -back years, and not only have they won quite a few games in the GAC, they've also won some games against some top-tier competition in the Central Regional. Right now, Quinones is in a two-strike count and looking to battle out of a tough spot. This is the guy you wanted to play in a situation like this. 392 batting average, nine home runs, 28 batted in. The 0-2 misses outside for a ball. At this stage in the season, Quinones would own Washita's triple crown. What a year it has been for the senior from the Valley of the Sun. The 1-2 from Adorno just fouled out a play over to the right side, and it is going to bounce out towards the visitor's bullpen. Adorno will look to regroup and retire his fourth consecutive batter in this start. The one-two pitch from Adorno runs inside, a bit too close to comfort for the Tiger catcher. He's now facing a 2-2 two -two count. You know, it's trying not to get hit by yet another pitch, except this time as a batter. The 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss for strike three. He got the breaking ball up and over the bat of Quinones. And he is headed back to the dugout as the first strikeout victim this afternoon for the Tigers. That is strikeout number 60 of 2024 for Jeremy Adorno, and it brings up the bat of Cade Burris. The Tiger-designated hitter also been on a bit of a tear here in his senior season. 
He's hit five home runs and driven in 17. Also now batting over 300 at 309. Right there, he hits a ball that about had home run distance, but it is going to take a loud bounce off of the top of the athletic offices out in the left field. And it's 0-1. The 0-1 pitch, misses high for a ball. Burris is from Walnut Ridge, Arkansas. Isaac, a little bit of music history for you. That is believed to be the only spot in Arkansas where the Beatles ever set foot. There's a Beatles park up there in Walnut Ridge, a celebrated part of the local culture. They also have a local festival up there. Meanwhile, it is one and two to Cade Burris. Walnut, also the hometown of Williams Baptist University. The one-two pitch misses outside, and it is two and two to Burris. The next pitch from Adorno is skied into left field, but again, should be playable. We'll see who makes the play. It is going to be left fielder Trey Shoup. So with that, Talon Heine is going to dig in for the Tigers. And Isaac, I just saw you messing with the door back behind us. It is a windy day here at Rab Rogers Field with the wind blowing straight in. And on days like that, or on days like this, I should say, the wind tends to blow open the door behind us and slam it back really quick. So if you do hear that from time to time, that is what you are hearing. Well, just around two days ago when we were doing a softball broadcast, we had a bit of a wind issue when the roster sheets we had got blown up into the tree. So a lot of wind this week here in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Heine is up in the count. It is now 2-0. He's going to send one the other way. And the hit drought is over. Heine hitting it into the perfect spot. He's going for two. And he will be in there with a stand-up double. The first hit and the first extra base hit of the weekend for the Tigers. So just when it seemed like Jeremy Adorno was about to record another 1-2-3 inning, the Tigers are presented with their first RBI opportunity of the series. It's a pretty good guy to have at the plate in this situation. Colin Lyles, another breakout freshman for the Tigers. He is manning first base today and batting 292 on the season. He's driven in 20 runs. Here's the first pitch from Adorno, fouled into the backstop. Heine was ready to take third base, but instead he'll have to retreat back to second. I believe that means that Lyles did get a piece of it on that hit. He did, the... and that can make a big difference. If you need any evidence of that, just take a look at the Cubs-Rangers game that happened last night when a foul ball was probably, it was a bang-bang play. Couldn't reverse it in real time, but a foul ball that was ruled a pass ball ended up putting the Cubs on top, and the Rangers had to tie it to force extra innings. Adorno, eyeing Heine at second, the 1-1. Good fastball on the inside corner, locks Lyles up, and it's now 1-2. and two. The Tigers trying to keep the rally alive and scratch across the first run of the weekend for either squad. Adorno wants to keep this one scoreless heading into the third. Here's the 1-2. It's hit into the air. Short stops under it, trying to make the play, and that's exactly what he does. So Brandon Nickel helps SAU dance out of danger, and the two-out threat will not come to pass here in the bottom of the second. No runs on one hit and no errors for the Tigers in the frame. And as we head to the third, we are still scoreless. Do not go anywhere, because when we come back, we are going to have the new number two on Washita's career strikeout list, Steve Smith. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law.
Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. There you're getting a glimpse at Washita's new strikeout king for a career. That is Cooper Timmons. And momentarily, we are going to have the former holder of that record, Steve Smith. Smith holding that record for a near 16 full seasons. And he is now set to join us on the broadcast. Steve, welcome, and you've also got a special guest here with us today. Yeah, I've got uh, both my boys here, Zane and Knox, and my dad drove up. He got here just a little bit ago. Uh, just excited to take it all in. A lot of memories coming back. First of all, congratulations to Coop. I'm glad he got it done early. Now he can breathe easy. Well, he's got his work cut out for him today against a lineup that's averaging nearly eight runs a game. But if not, there's anything not, he's proven. Yeah, not much has changed. SAU was a powerhouse back when uh, I played too. But, uh, you know, Washington's having a really good year. Coop's very poised and uh, – you know, been doing this for a minute. I think this is his fourth or fifth year and probably probably not too concerned about it. It's just another day of work for him. Mikey McGinnis is going to fly out to start the inning, but you were a part of Washita back when it was part of the Gulf South Conference. Mm -hmm. And you were also part of what at the time, back in 2022, was the last Tiger team to make the NCAA tournament in 2008, went all the way to the national title game. What was it like to see the Tigers get back into the tournament after all those years with Coop on the team? Uh, it was good, you know, it, you, you always want the program to thrive and, and there for a few years after 08, it had kind of taken a, a dip down, but to see them come back strong and, and get back there was, was obviously very refreshing. You try to, try to develop a culture, not just build a program, it's something that stays year in and year out. And I think that's what they're, they're back to doing here. Coach Howard's, uh, very good at what he does, and I'm glad that he's at the head of it to, to take him there. Chris Lyles do up for the second time this afternoon. And let's go back to that 2008 season because what a magical run it was for the Tigers all the way to the national title game. That's the last time that Washita has reached Cary, North Carolina. You had a unique experience because you actually threw quite a bit in a two-week span. Yeah, um, I don't I don't remember what the numbers were. I know it was a lot of innings, a lot of pitches, but uh, you know at the time we were just trying to cross the finish line. Fell up a little short, but uh, no doubt, lots of fun, great experience. Wouldn't trade it for anything. I was I was trying to I was trying to throw my arm off. I <laughs> I, I was fortunate enough to continue to to keep playing for a few years. At the time, I didn't know if I was going to get that opportunity, so uh, I just knew that uh, whenever I walked away. I wanted it uh, to give everything that I had, and so an injury at that point wasn't really a concern. We just we wanted to lift that trophy. Didn't get to, but uh, still, no doubt, a fun run to, to make it. Well, and until Coop broke the record just moments ago, you held the career strikeout record for nearly 16 full seasons. It hadn't been touched, and that number caught the eye of some professional teams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, it, I was drafted by Cleveland uh, 25th round uh, in 08 after my senior year and uh, was fortunate to, to go on and play three seasons uh, in their minor league system. Again, dream come true, wouldn't trade it for anything. But even then, with that experience, best four years of baseball of my life were right here at Washita. Wouldn't trade them. Well, this is certainly a special place to play ball, and this is a special team as well that started out with young talent, including Cooper Timmons and several of his classmates, and just has continued to get better and better with each passing year. There's also a great freshman class here this year, including Wes Scott, who you see out at second base, and then Colin Lyles over at first base. Those two holding down the right side of the infield very well. Yeah, it uh, I, again, like I said, I, I'm glad to see the program coming back to what it has become this year and, and continuing to grow. You know, I was talking to Chris earlier, Bab, and I think he told me 26 home runs in the last seven games, over 50 bombs this season, all in all. And uh, right now tied for first in the conference, correct, with SAU, Harding, and uh, Monticello. Is that, is that right? That's right. Yeah. 
A lot of a uh, lot of guys still around from when I played. Coach Pedigree with SAU was pitching coach then. Whenever I was here, Coach Harvey, who's at Monticello, was across the street at Henderson. Uh, glad to see all those guys still still involved in a part of the conference. And I'm sure as a pitcher, it's got to make you smile a little bit too to know that the Tigers are currently at the top of the conference in earned run average. Yeah, I don't think we ever held that as uh, collectively as a team, and so to for that. Uh, to be something that they're getting to experience this year, that's definitely good. It's, it definitely speaks to why they're having success, no doubt. Uh, the the bats are there, the bombs are there, you know, the run production's coming, but uh, you got to be able to hold guys at the plate and on the mound, and it looks like that's what they're being able to do well. Well, as we mentioned earlier, you were with the team back when it was a part of the GSC Conference. Obviously, the teams have switched up a little bit. Is there one rival? What a play at the hot corner by Kieran Terrio laying out to make a web gym play. But before we go to the break, Steve, if there was one team out of the GSC that is currently not in the GAC, who would you like to see the Tigers take on? Maybe an old rival from your playing days. Uh, our biggest rival at the time was um, when I got done, it was Delta State. You know, now whenever I started um, my freshman year, we, we hadn't really proven ourselves yet, and so it wasn't a rival for them, you know, because uh, we just, you know, we just weren't very good. But by, by the time that I had gotten to my junior and senior year, we hosted a regional here. We went to the regional in Delta. Uh, we were always going back and forth. But me personally, I always woke up early against SAU and Delta State. Those were the two guys I wanted to see the most. SAU told me coming out of college or coming out of high school that uh, – I wasn't the type of pitcher that they were looking for, so I always played with that chip on my shoulder whenever I got to face those guys. And then Delta State being ranked, you know, number one in the country and all the success that they had, uh, those were, in order to be the best, you had to beat the best. And so that's those, those were the guys that we looked to play. Delta, Delta State and SAU, no doubt. <laughs> so... I just got word from Chris Babb in my ear. We need to hear about Washita's win against Delta State in the regional in 2008. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience? Uh, I remember um, I used to pitch with a toothpick in, and uh, which is odd, I know, but uh, just something that calmed me. I remember dogpiling on the mound after we did it. Uh, the, the toothpick jabbed and went in and through my lip. But... Uh, I come in out of the bullpen to, to close the game uh, like a bull coming out of a chute. I think I was running 100 miles an hour to get to the mound, try and close it out. And uh, it was just uh, it, at, at that moment, we still had the World Series to play. But at that moment, you know, you'd worked hard for four years to try to develop a culture of baseball here and, and put Washita on the map collegiately for, for the game of baseball. and. My freshman year when I got here the year prior, I think they'd only won seven games out of a 56-game set. And, and so the the program was struggling. That was also uh, the year that, you know, Boston had turned things around and finally broke the curse. And Kurt Schilling had the bloody sock. And so it was just exciting at the time to, to be a part of a program that you knew that that's what you were working towards. And so all the blood, all the sweat, all the tears that went into four years of of playing and trying to build a program to what it came to and then to go into Delta State, who was at the top of the conference at the time, top of the country, and to knock them off at home. It just was everything coming to, uh, to be realized what we'd been working towards. It was very special for all of us, for Coach Norwood, for the whole team, for the parents, everybody that had been through it. And already two away here in the bottom of the third, but it is amazing the parallels between this team now and the team that ended up rising to prominence there in the mid to late 2000s. Like your team, that Washington had been struggling for a little bit there, but Luke Howard quickly settled into his plan here for the program, and all of a sudden you break a 14-year drought reaching the NCAA tournament. You win a regional game against one of the best teams that this part of the country has to offer in the form of Central Missouri, and all of a sudden, this team is right back towards the top of the conference in terms of baseball. Truly amazing to see. Beautiful scoop at first, and that is going to do it for the third inning of play. But, Steve, thank you so much for being here today and for 
being a part of this event, now part of the best tandem in Wachita history <laughs> in terms of strikeouts. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Again, just want to say congratulations to Cooper Timmons and his family, and just uh, very proud for him. I got to speak with him last week and meet him one-on-one uh, -on -one and just uh, encouraged him and told him that uh, I had nothing but uh, praise and respect for him as a player and that I was happy to see him do it. And who knows, we may see a few more Smiths wearing the Washita colors. I hope at some so. Point. We got a 12 year old right here behind me that uh, I hope uh, gets to fortunate enough to play at this level one day. Well, hopefully, we will call, be calling his name here in a few years. But thank you so much, you Steve. Bet. Thank you. Again, that is Steve Smith, former holder of Washita's all time strikeout record, now number two on the list, right behind Cooper Timmons, who will be back in action when we come back. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network. Presented by Taylor King Law. Whether you realize it or not, you see the work of bats and signs all around Arkadelphia. When you see the Badger equipment trailer on the way to a Badger game, bats and signs did that. When you're watching the Badgers, Tigers, or Reddies and see the signage that just really makes their facilities pop, bats and signs did that too. You see the signage in downtown Arkadelphia on the campuses of Washita and Henderson or the sign in your neighbor's yard supporting a candidate or their favorite badger? Yep, Bats and Sign did that too. Longtime residents and supporters of all things Arkadelphia called Mark, Jared, Chris, or Ryan at Bats and Signs today to see what they can do for you. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. On a day like today, it's fitting that it's a pitcher's duel between Cooper Timmons and Jeremy Adorno, the top two teams in the GAC in terms of ERA, two of the best pitchers that not only this conference, but this part of the nation has to offer. And it's also a day where we had Steve Smith in the house, longtime holder of Washita strikeout record before Timmons bested that record just a few moments ago. But Isaac, you heard some of the stories. It's amazing to see some of the parallels between those mid to late 2000s teams at Washita and the teams that we've seen here in the early 2020s for the Tigers trying to return back to prominence and doing so successfully by reaching the NCAA tournament the past two seasons, looking to make that three in a row here in 2024. I think, since, I think Chase, ever since the start of the tenure of Coach Luke Howard, it has been a, almost blast from the past that you could say for this Washita team bringing back the success of the early 2000s and now they're at another I have another opportunity this season to take home another GAC title and then hopefully make it far into the postseason. Right now we will see Jaden Woolbright at the plate. First pitch. Misses low and away for a ball. The 1 0 from Timmons. Trying to find the bottom of the zone, cannot do so. The senior fires again, trying to find that top of the zone. The home fans feeling like that was a good pitch, a fastball up. But it is 3-0, and and SAU's dugout letting Timmons hear it. The next pitch. That fastball will catch the zone, no doubt about it. And now it is 3-1 to Woolbright. Timmons looking non-characteristically characteristically a little bit wary today. You know, not not providing the same production that he usually does. This one is going to fall into right field for a base hit. Isaac now just going to cut it off there and sending it back in. Actually, that is Joseph Bowen out there in right field for the Tigers. That's another guy who's having a breakout season for Washita. And Tigers are going to need some help here in inning number four as there are already two men on, still nobody out. Quinones stepping forward to give some signs to Timmons in the infield. First pitch of the at-bat. 
Catches the outside corner for a strike. The 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two over the top of a good breaking ball. And this is the Cooper Timmons we're used to seeing with an 0-2 count here. Swing and a miss for strike three. It's a drop third strike, but Quinones quickly applying the tag, and really there was nowhere for him to go as both runners were staying put. Carter Clairhout do up at the plate for SAU. He is the first strikeout victim of the day for Cooper Timmons. His name also going to be remembered with that accomplishment. Meanwhile, a bit of a dangerous lead at second base by Will Richardson, but he's going to scamper back in time. With that being said, Claire Hout is a great batter, hitting over 300 on the season. He's homer twice, he's driven in 24, and right now he has a chance to drive in the first run of the weekend, get a little bit of revenge against Timmons perhaps. Now, Luke Howard's going to go out and have a word with his starter as Timmons seems to be struggling with his command a bit at the moment. As they talk things over on the mound, we do want to thank you for tuning in to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. This is a student-led production out of the Rogers Department of Communications right here at Washita Baptist University. And whether you are a Tiger fan, a Mule Rider fan, or just looking to catch what has been voted the series of the weekend by D2 Baseball, we are so glad that you joined us for this special matchup. So the Tigers have officially been charged their mound visit for the inning. Howard cannot reemerge unless he wants to make a pitching change. And given that the bullpen is empty right now, that is unlikely to be the case anytime soon. It's all up to Timmons and to try and limit the damage here in inning number four. We'll see if that's what he does. The 2-0. Squares it up, gives it a good ride. Will it stay fair? Yes, it will. Bounces just inside the line for extra bases. One run comes across to score. And Woolbright will hold up at third. Nonetheless, it is the ultimate measure of revenge for Carter Clairhout, the freshman. Driving in the go-ahead run with a double, and it is one to nothing, SAU. Here's the pitch from Timmons. Runs high for a ball. The key for Timmons here is just going to be staying in his staying in his groove and not trying to focus on that last play because right now with the 1-0 lead, he doesn't want to allow the Mule Riders to get any more runners in, especially in an inning where he's got a guy on second and third right now. And you can see Wesley Scott playing in. Bermudez, Ontario creeping up as well, protecting against the ground ball. It's going to be fouled away. They are certainly counting on McGinnis pulling the ball right now to the left side of the infield, especially with that wind blowing out to left field. We'll see if that's indeed the case. Scott now playing back, the one-two. Check swing, maybe a measure of self-defense that time, and it's now one and two to McGinnis. Junior trying to avoid fanning for the 25th time here in 2024. Now Scott playing in along with Bermudez. Breaking ball stays high and it's two and two. Nothing has been easy for Timmons here in inning number four. The two-two pitch. Fouled out of play over to the right side. 
Chase, it is a bit surprising to me that Coach Howard isn't at least getting one of his one of his relievers warmed up in the bullpen right now, especially with you know uh, Timmons allowing a run here, and with a chance to allow two more, if the, if this guy can get a hit. Well, if any man has earned the trust of Luke Howard over the last four years or so, it has been Cooper Timmons, a guy who has consistently been excellent for Washington, although he finds himself in a bit of a pickle right now. You have to think he can get himself out of it just as quickly as he got himself in it. Now it looks like we're going to see somebody jogging out to the bullpen, although that might just be a player looking to retrieve that foul ball. Indeed it is. The 2-2 pitch. Fouled off to the right side. Another thing too, Isaac, in a series like this, where you could be in for some lengthy battles and some pitchers duels in particular, you gotta have that bullpen ready. The Tigers would love to conserve their bullpen going into the rest of the weekend. The 2-2 pitch. Just able to get a piece of it, ran in on the hands, but again, it's two and two to the right fielder for the Mule Riders. And again, another another display of the winds today with our with our door being slammed behind us again. The two-two pitch, swing and a miss for strike three. Left the slider up, but it works to perfection. And that is an important out number two here in inning number four. Timmons records his third punch out of the ball game, number 316 of his career. And it's plays like that that make Cooper Timmons, that, or the reason why Cooper Timmons is sitting at the top of the mountain in career strikeouts here at Washita, able to put off, all, able to put off all of the, you know, issues this this inning, and just to stay in the pocket and get his first strikeout of the inning. Check on the runner at second. Bit of a collision. Bermudez shows him the ball, but the umpire rules him safe. Some visible, some visible upset. A couple fans look upset after that one, especially after it looked like Bermudez had the ball there. Bang, bang play, and the umpire decided that the tide did indeed go to the runner. So it is now one and one. Burroughs struggling a bit here in 2024, batting 125 in a limited sample size. With that being said, he's got a chance to come through for his team in a big way. Might do just that. Bermudez having to range over, but it's through for a base hit. Runner has the green light all the way, and even though it just scampered onto the outfield grass, that is a two-run single for Clay Burrows with two away in the inning. Tough break for the Tigers after they thought that they had after they thought that they had the end of the inning in sight. Now down 3-0. With still an out to get. With that, the lineup card is going to turn over for Cliff Lyles, who is already. Two for two on the day. He's going to foul one off to the right side. Lyles has been a mainstay in this SAU lineup for the last three years. He plays particularly well against the Tigers, although right now Cooper Timmons, maybe a little bit of frustration behind that fastball, fires it in at a high speed for strike two. O2 pitch, popped up, but playable on the right side of the infield. Lyles signals for it and makes the play for round number three. So Cooper Timmons does get out of the inning, but not before allowing three runs. And SAU holding a 3 nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Barry and Turnage, we specialize in bringing the law to your corner. We are dedicated to understanding what results you want and to helping you understand what actions we can take on your behalf. With over 30 years of experience and a proven track record of success, Barry and Turnage is here to lead you down a path to the results you need. 
We will work with you every step of the way to make sure that you understand the choices you are making and feel empowered to make them. Barry and Turnage. Serious injuries require serious attorneys. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Wachita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Jeremy Adorno looking to keep the shutout alive for SAU as the shutout was broken up for Cooper Timmons in the top half of the inning. The first blow of the inning was a measure of revenge for Carter Clairhout after becoming the victim of Cooper Timmons' record-setting strikeout. He bounces back with a go-ahead double and then follow that up later in the inning with a two-run single from Clay Burrows with two out already to extend the lead to three. But right now, G. Allen looking to get the Tigers back in the ball game in a big way. And what a guy to do it. G. Allen on the season has been one of the premier batters for this Washita team. We already talked about his eight home runs and 22 RBIs, but also second on the team in hits with 39 this year. Here's the first pitch of the at-bat, and Allen went around. It's a strike. He wanted to go after it, but then had to duck out of the way as a measure of self-defense. Still, he went around. The 1-1 from Adorno. Not a bad breaking ball on the outside corner, but according to the umpire, it did stay a bit outside for ball two. Allen sends it out deep into center field. Lyle's going back, and he is going to make the play on the warning track for a loud out number one. And just when you thought, just when we thought that Allen was going to end Adorno's shutout, just barely cannot get it past the left field wall there. And here we are with one out. First pitch taken outside for a ball. Looking back to the last time that Jeremy Adorno was here at Washita through six innings of work and allowed one earned run, two runs in total on five hits. He also struck out nine. Looking to follow up that quality start with another here today he is now looking to battle back in the count. It is 2-1 to Wes Scott. A lot of notable performances to speak of in that season for Adorno. As this one is also going to be given a good ride out to the left side. Scott getting his bat to the ball a lot of, a lot of times, but has yet to hit it fair. The 2-2 pitch jams him a bit. Should be playable on the right side of the infield. Indeed it is. Quick flip over to first as they are in time for route number two. So Mikey Quinones looking to help the Tigers avoid a 1-2-3 inning. Adorno looking to make it four scoreless to start out his outing. First pitch, stung into the gap, and that is going to fall for extra bases. Actually, it's a great cutoff in right field. What a relay by Mikey McGinnis to prevent what would have been extra bases. Instead, it's a long single for Michael Quinones, the second hit of the day for the Tigers, and it will bring up Cade Burris. Burris 0 for 1 on the afternoon, flew out in his first plate appearance. 
Looking to avenge that result right here. Adorno fires a slider on the outside corner. Umpire says it catched or it caught the zone for a strike. Might have to give a little credit there to Grant Rosma as well. He framed it up very well. The 0 1, swing and a miss for strike two. There's no doubting that that one was a strike. And it was just as filthy of a slider from Adorno. The 0 2 to Burris. Thought he locked him up on the outside corner. Instead, Adorno's heading back to the mound. He's only struck out one batter today, but his pitch to contact methods have worked very well. Only two hits on the day for the Tigers. Strong wind out to right field. Burris is going to give it a good ride. Still carrying out to the warning track, and I think that time the wind was actually working against him as it was blowing in about as strong as it gets. Blowing out to right field and a little bit in, and that is going to retire the side. So the Tigers do strand one runner, no runs on one hit and no errors. Make it four scoreless innings to start out the ball game for Jeremy Adorno. And as we head to the fifth, your score is SAU three, Washita nothing. This is Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. The central and midwestern U.S. averages more than 850 tornadoes each year. And lately, the number of floods has been rising in the region, too. So chances are, there will be more twisters and floods near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are, they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Cooper Timmons has already set a new school record for career strikeouts, but currently he is in line for the loss. Gave up three innings in the top of the fourth, looking to bounce back with a strong inning here in inning number five. But again, Coach Howard wants to go with the guy that he's gone to so many times over the last three or four years. There's still nobody out there in that bullpen. And Chase, I'm sure if you are Timmons right now, you want to end this historic day with a win. And so if you get in Timmons' head right now, he probably is he probably is very intense on pitching as much as he can today and you know improving on what has been a kind of subpar subpar day for him so far. This pitch is hit into the air over to the left side. Should be playable for Terrio. Going to be a tough play in the sun, and he lays out to make another highlight reel play. You can make the argument that it may not have needed to be a highlight reel play, but given the sun that's shining above Rab Rogers Field right now, any routine play for an infielder that's not wearing sunglasses is going to be celebrated. Well, Tierro made a diving catch on a line drive out to left field earlier today. And so you see that's his second diving catch for the day. First, first pitch is taken on the inside corner for a strike as Brandon Nickel digs in for the third time today. The 0-1 misses its spot. And any time that Cooper Timmons throws one out of the zone, the Mule Rider dugout is going to let him hear it. It doesn't matter if they're in Magnolia or really anywhere. The Mule Riders are going to try to give their guys as much fuel as possible. It's currently a 1-2 count. We do also have to mention all of the blue and gold that is in the park today. There are quite a few fans that have made the trip up for the Mule Riders in what will be an important series indeed in the Great American Conference standings. Timmons trying to tempt Nickel with the breaking ball down. Instead, it's 2-2. Two and two. Nickel, a very dangerous hitter here. Tierro trying to lock him up in a, in, a, in a way that 
is not going to allow for him to hit a bomb out of the park. Timmons, the 2-2 pitch. Little tapper sent out to third. Terrio, bare hand, tries to make the play, but it gets away from his grasp. As we say in basketball, Tierro may have gotten lost in the sauce there, Chase. You know, back-to-back -back highlight plays for him. Wanted Back-to-back -back highlight plays for him. Terrio wanted to get to get another one here at the third at third base at first base and just could not it's an infield single the second hit of the day for Brandon Nickel and now Will Richardson is going to take a slider on the outside corner for a strike Timmons will have to be very careful against Richardson who is batting from the right-handed batter's box wind is blowing out to left field now starting to blow in perhaps so that bodes better for Timmons Nonetheless, this one's squared up well, and it has hit into the home bullpen to make it strike two. Timmons looking to set down Richardson. Here's the 0-2. Reaches for it and somehow finds a way to send it into left field for a base hit. And right there is a case of tipping your cap to the batter because you did everything you could to put yourself in the best position to record an out, and the batter still find a way to make the best of it. First pitch of the new at bat is sent out to right field. Bolin is under it, and he will make the play for out number two. Meanwhile, Nickel is going to tag up to third. It's a decent relay that's cut off by Dustin Bermudez. With that, there are runners on the corners. Two away in the inning, and Trace Shoup is due up at the dish. One of three mule riders set down via the punch out today. But as we've seen, players in this SAU program have a way of bouncing back from adversity. This is a team that's looking to erase a four-game losing streak, something that hasn't happened since 2002, and that's certainly going to help their case. An extra base hit down the line. Here comes the second run. Terrio fires it into the plate, and they will team up to gun him down. So one run will score on the extra base hit. However, what an effort there from G. Allen Kieran Terrio and Mikey Quinones teaming up to gun down the second runner for route number three. Nonetheless, it is a four run lead for the Mule Riders as we head to the bottom half of the fifth. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Jeremy Adorno looking to make it five straight innings without allowing a single run. His team gave him a little bit more insurance in the top half of the inning as it should go down as an RBI double for Trey Shoup, his first hit of the day. Indeed, it has been recorded as a double. It played at one run. But what a relay it was between G. Allen, Kieran Terrio, and Mikey Quinones to gun down the second runner for out number three. Just excellent crisis management there, just allowing the one run after what was a spectacular hit out into deep left field. Welcome, welcoming Adorno back to the inning. It will be Talon Heine at the plate for Washtaw. 
Hani is one for one on the day. He has the only extra base hit of the day for the Tigers, and that was the only hit that Washita collected as a team in the first trip through the lineup. Heine's had an excellent season in his own right. He's currently second on the team in batting average at 355. He's one of five players for Washita to bring home a weekly award this year. One of three to bring home the coveted GAC Player of the Week award. He was the first Tiger to bring home that honor this season, later joined by the likes of G. Allen, and just this last week, Mikey Quinones. We've also got to give a shout out to Chase Overly, who is named GAC Pitcher of the Week for his performance against Southeastern last time out. It's now a one and two count to Talon Heine, but Overly recording his fourth quality start in a row, picking up the victory by striking out a career high 11 batters. And Heine will be heading back to the dugout after a filthy slider from Jeremy Adorno helps the right-hander record his second punch out of the day. With one away here in the bottom of the fifth, we'll see what Colin Lyles has to offer. Lyles gives it a pretty solid ride, but it is right to the left fielder. That's Trey Shoup. So quickly, there are two away in the inning with Joseph Bolin due up at the plate. Bolin is 0 for 1 on the afternoon with a ground out in his first plate appearance, but he's also on a great stretch right now in what has proven to be a breakout season. He's going to take this one down for a ball. Looking at his numbers. He has a batting average of 333 on the year. His on-base percentage is at 425. Strangely enough, he hits better against right-handed pitchers than against lefties. Now, that may be due to sample size, but a 351 batting average in righty on righty matchups is nothing to scoff at. He also bats 407 in two out situations such as these. The 3 0 from Adorno takes a good fastball on the inside corner for a strike. And now the Kissimmee, Florida native, will look to battle back from the mound. Here's the 3 1 to Bolin. This fastball stays too far inside, and Adorno has surrendered his first walk of the afternoon. He's been able to stay away from the base on balls up to this point, but that streak will come to an end here in the bottom of the fifth, and Kieran Terrio has an opportunity to keep the inning alive for Washita. First pitch from Adorno. Catches the inside corner for a strike. A little bit of sliding action there to start out the at bat. Adorno sets. The 0 1. Swing and a miss for strike two. Swung up and over the top of the ball inside. Adorno looking to get out of the jam, the 0-2. They'll say it got it. It's a hit by pitch for Kieran Terrio. That's the third time that he's been plunked in 2024. And with that, the lineup card will turn over for Dustin Bermudez. opportunity for the Tiger shortstop to get Washita back in the ball game after a two out walk and hit by pitch he's first pitch swinging and he lines it to the left side foul
Bermudez. Has 22 extra base hits on the season. Eight home runs and 14 doubles. The Tigers lead the GAC in both of those categories. They were a doubles machine against ECU. No one pitch, misses low and outside for a ball. Bermudez currently occupying shortstop, but if this game is close towards the end, it wouldn't be a surprise to see him on the mound as well. The 1-1 one, one pitch, line to the left side, and that is a fair ball. Terrio is going to hustle in. Meanwhile, the home plate umpire is going to rule it foul. Fans were shouting fair. Players kept running as if it was fair. What a letdown for the, Was for the Washita base runners. They are getting all the way to home before they realize that the umpire calls it a foul. And, you know, that's it's just a tough, another tough break for a Tiger team that really thought that they were gonna get themselves on the board for the first time today. Bermudez will look to try and do it again. This time hit it in fair territory. Here's the one two. Doing a good job just to spoil off that high heater that kept darting up. Adorno happy that he could get Bermudez to chase. And now we're going to see a mound visit between Rosma and Adorna. Bermudez would at least like to work his way on to set the table for G. Allen, but knowing the senior, he would like to bring in those runs himself as well if that is in the cards. Here's the one, two. Again, squares it up well. Again, hit foul. Ramirez still trying to straighten it out against Adorno. He's been a little bit in front of Adorno's stuff. Adorno trying to keep him honest with a combination of breaking balls and heaters. We'll see the one-two again. The junior right-hander keeping an eye on the runner at second. The one-two darts all the way into the opposing batter's box. I have to wonder if Bowen might be playing a little bit of mind games here with Adorno as the lead runner trying to take his focus off of the batter at the plate. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Misses down low and outside for ball three. Big pitch coming up here. Full count, two away, two on, and number two at the plate. Nowhere left to go here but somewhere. Runners will be in motion on the pitch. Step off, check on the runner at second. He's back in time. Payoff once more, Bermudez just able to pop it up. We'll see if it gets out of play. Yes, it will. And the Tiger faithful will breathe a sigh of relief. Been a very tough battle here between Adorno and Bermudez here at the top of the lineup. Something's got to give, but neither one of these men wants to lose this battle. Here's the payoff once more. It's a little tapper sent out to third. 
All that the third baseman Wolbright has to do is step on the bag and SAU is out of the jam. No runs on no hits and no errors, but two men stranded on base for Washita. As we head to the sixth, the your score is SAU four, Washita nothing. This is Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. I don't remember how it started. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Washita leading 4 0. Heading into inning number six, and nothing has changed out there on the mound for the Tigers. Luke Howard wanting to go with his starter, Cooper Timmons, who has already set a new career record for most strikeouts in a career earlier today. Fortunately, the Mule Riders have put a little bit of a damper on the party with two back-to-back -back strong innings. They played at three back in the fourth and then just one inning ago. It was a double down the line that scored one, although it could have been more. Fortunately, it was not thanks to a great relay between G. Allen, Kieran Terrio, and Mikey Quinones. Right now, it is going to be Carter Clarehow, the freshman DH for SAU that got the scoring started back in the fourth. He hit an RBI double down the line. Also was the victim of strikeout number 314 for Timmons. Since then, he's a perfect two for two. Follow up the double with a single here to lead off the top of the sixth. So with nobody out here, and a runner on first, it'll be Mikey McGinnis. He is 0 for 2 on the afternoon, but as we have seen, the Mule Rider batters have a way of changing their fortunes on the turn of a die. Case in point, this ball is sent out high in the air into left field, and it is going to elude G. Allen's grasp for a two-run home run. Mikey McGinnis with his fifth round tripper of 2024. And the Mule Rider right field has extended his team's lead to half a dozen. It's six to nothing SAU. With that, every SAU batter minus Grant Rosma has now recorded a base hit for SAU. Meanwhile, Player Burroughs trying to bunt his way on. It's going to result in a foul ball. Last time up at the plate for Burroughs, it was a good at bat. Battled a little bit and sent a ground ball up the middle for a two run single with two away in the top of the fourth to make this a three run lead for SAU. He's going to square this one up well, but also foul. Since Burroughs' last trip to the plate, SAU's lead has doubled. And thanks to excellent pitching from Jeremy Adorno, still a zero on the scoreboard for Washita. The 0-2 pitch from Timmons misses outside, and it's one and two. Timmons looking to bounce back here. It hasn't been the outing that he was hoping for. But at the same time, he's got to find a way to step up with an empty bullpen. Beautiful breaking ball that just does miss the plate for ball two. SAU looking to keep the rally going as Burroughs pops this one back out of play. The second baseman will see at least one more. Chris Lyles in the top of the order waiting on deck. The 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss for strike three. 
That's the fourth punch out of the ball game for Cooper Timmons. And with it, the lineup card will turn over for Chris Lyles. Timmons just further cementing his place in the history, now sitting at 317 in his career. Four above the legendary Steve Smith, who was in attendance for his history-making moment. Meanwhile, it's now a hat trick for Chris Lyles. He's got three hits on the day and four at-bats. Make it half a dozen runs and now a full dozen hits on the game for SAU. And Grant Rosma has a chance to be the last mule rider to join the hit parade. He's going to take one outside for a ball. With that being said, Rosma has reached earlier in the day with a walk. So it's official, every player in the starting lineup for SAU today has reached base safely at least once. Checks his swing, but fails to do so in time. That's strike one. Next pitch, sent out to deep right field. Bowling going after, and he's going to make the play out in front of the 370 sign for out number two. So Grant Rosemo will have to wait to join the hit parade. But now Cooper Timmons will have to face off against a man who has already joined that parade twice today. It's Brandon Nickel. He is two for three and has scored once. And like we said last time, Nickel has a very strong bat. And so Timmons is going to be trying to prevent Nickel from, you know, getting another home run after McGinnis did it earlier. Nickel is the home run leader for SAU with nine. He's also driven in 32 runs. And he'd love to send one into the gap and try to further add on to this SAU lead. The beautiful comeback slider from Cooper Timmons. Now a 1-1 count. The next pitch to SAU shortstop is a swing and a miss for strike two. Going back to old reliable, that outside slider. And now Timmons is one strike away from getting out of the inning. Pause, the one-two pitch, swing and a miss for strike three. No need to shake things up. It's three straight sliders that Cooper Timmons will utilize to set down Brandon Nickel on strikes. That is Timmons' fifth punch out of the ball game. However, SAU has added on to its lead with a two-run home run just moments ago. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, your score is SAU six, Washita nothing. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. As a student athlete in college, I first got involved with the NCAA at the national level. It was through the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, SAC, gave me an opportunity to advocate on behalf of all student athletes to affect change and to make an impact. The NCAA is giving the student athlete a platform to voice their concerns and to be able to advocate for what's gonna affect their well-being. The policies that are being put in place are speaking towards academics, they're speaking towards well-being, they're speaking towards fairness, creating a culture so that the student athletes have the best experience as possible. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Jeremy Adorno looking to qualify for the quality start here in inning number six. He has been excellent today. No runs allowed on just two hits, and although he had a little bit of two-out trouble going for him in that last frame, he was able to strand both runners. But right now, he's going to have to face off against a guy who hit a ball pretty hard, but it died out at the warning track for a long fly out his last time up. That's G. Allen. Allen is 0 for 2 on the afternoon and looking to change both his and his team's fortunes in a big way. He's going to take a breaking ball outside for ball one. 
back in Durant last weekend. Allen recording the 30th home run of his career. Passing up Tyler Reebok to take sole possession of number two on the Tigers' home run list. He is now chasing Destin McConan, who had 39 on his career. But Allen, since that 30th home run, has added on three more. He's up to 33. And that one about had the distance to be number 34. Instead, it's a long foul ball. Might even be greeting our friends over at Henderson State University for how far that ball went. The one-two pitch misses outside for a ball. Speaking of Henderson State, the Reddies will be in town. Well, of course, they're always in town, but they'll be on this side of the ravine on April 9th. You can catch that game right here on the Washita Sports Digital Network as Allen checks his swing, did so successfully, and it, the count has run full. Something's got to give with a payoff pitch. Allen is going to send it back out of play, still trying to measure up. Adorno's breaking stuff, which has been giving the Tigers fits today. Even Bermudez, who saw it pretty well, could only manage to foul it off most of the time. The payoff pitch runs high and in for ball four, and Allen has walked his first walk of the afternoon. That's just the second base on ball surrendered today by Jeremy Adorno. And it sets up for Wesley Scott. Scott, 0 for 2 on the afternoon. And he is a guy that has hit exceptionally well on the Tigers' home turf this year. First pitch, swing and a miss for a strike out in front of a good breaking ball. The 0-1 from Adorno misses outside, and it is 1-1 one one to Scott. Also got to keep an eye on Allen over there at first base. He's stolen 11 bases this year. Quickly approaching a new career high as this one gets away from the catcher. And that will allow Allen to scamper up into scoring position. And just like you said, 11 stolen bases. There's number 12. Well, that one's not going to count for his stolen base total as it should be ruled a wild pitch. Excuse me. The 2-1 from Adorno. Pretty good looking fastball there, but it does miss below the knees of Scott for ball three. Mikey Quinones waiting on deck, and if Adorno can't throw one in the zone here, he might be stepping up with two men on. The 3-1 pitch does find the zone. About as well as you can locate the fastball on the inside corner, it's now three and two to Scott. Nasty pitch there, locking Scott up on the inside, and you know he doesn't dare want to swing at that one because it would probably be an infield out. The payoff pitch popped up and out of play foul over to the left side. Finally going to fall down on top of the athletic offices out there as that one had plenty of hang time on it. Second straight, straight full count here for Adorno as well. Looks like there is a righty getting loose out there in the bullpen for Washington. If I'm not mistaken, that's Weston Bailey. Scott continuing to battle here against a man who had a breakout freshman season in his own right. The 
Dangerous lead from Allen. The payoff pitch, fouled into the backstop. Quickly corrected by Rosma off the bounce. Now Tag Paco is going to head out and give a fresh set of baseballs to the home plate umpire. Adorno eyeing Allen. He looks back to Scott, back to Allen. And he's going to go ahead and look for the pickoff. Meanwhile, that one's going to get away from Nickel. A costly mistake indeed. We'll have to see who gets credited with the error. As that one looked like it was online, it just got away from Nickel a little bit. And now a little bit of momentum trending to the home team, Washita Tigers now as Scott steps back up to the plate. Scott sends this one out to second base. Thrower to first is there in time, but the freshman will pick up the first run of the weekend for the Tigers. It's an RBI fielder's choice, and Washita will begin the long journey back into this ball game. It is a 6-1 lead for SAU. Aki Quinones looking to do some damage here with one away in the inning. And he is going to take a breaking ball down for ball one. The 1 0 from Adorno. Slider that just missed the outside corner. It's now 2 0 to Quinones. The next pitch, checked his swing, but failed to do so in time. That's strike one. The 2-1 from Adorno is going to miss outside, and it's now 3-1 and one to Quinones. And with Adorno starting to trend downward a little bit, you see on the right side of the field in the Mule Rider Bullpen, another, another pitcher warming up. That is going to be a foul ball off of the leg of Quinones. And he is going to have to regroup. The payoff pitch is lined to the right side, and that's going to be a fair ball for extra bases. Taking the turn, he's headed for two. Right fielder struggles with it a little bit, but it's a stand-up double for Mikey Quinones, giving his signature shimmy with another extra base hit. Quinones, oh, Quinones oh, the only player on this Washita team to have multiple hits in the game. That is his eighth double of the campaign. If you want to talk Total extra base hits, he's now up to 18 on the year, including a team leading nine home runs. And Cade Burris wanted to get a little bit of revenge for the last time he was at the plate. He hit one on the screws, but it got caught up in the wind for a loud out number three. He's going to take a healthy hack here, comes up empty-handed. That's strike one. All told on the year thus far, Burris is batting 301. He's got an on-base percentage of 426. Not afraid to work a few walks as well. The 0-1 pitch taken on the outside corner, and now it is 0-2 to the Tiger DH. Talon Heine waiting on deck for Washita. The 0-2. Runs high and outside for a ball, and now it is one and two. <laughs> 
Trying to keep an eye on Quinones. Swing and a miss for strike three. Burris went out reaching for a pitch and it looked like it might have been foul tipped for a moment, but it was indeed held on to by catcher Grant Rosma. So now it will likely take a base hit to bring home that runner from second. Fortunately for the Tigers, they've got a good guy for the job. That is Talon Heine. He doubled in his first plate appearance until a few moments ago, and that was the only extra base hit of the day for the Tigers. He's going to give this one a decent ride out to left field, but it's going to hang up long enough for the play to be made with no trouble by left fielder Trey Shoup. The Tigers do strike for one run on the inning. Credit the RBI to Wes Scott on a fielder's choice. And Washita is going to try to continue the comeback train when we come back. After six, your score is SAU six, Washita one. This is Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Make Print Mania in downtown Arkadelphia your place to get embroidery, screen printing, trophies, and more. Drop by their store on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia or visit their website at printmaniatees.com to see how they can help your business or group. Need a shirt for an event? Let Print Mania take care of that. Need promotional materials for your business or organization? You can let Print Mania take care of that too. A family-run local business in Arkadelphia, Print Mania has been serving the public since 1992. Call Print Mania today, 870-246-3803. Welcome back to Rab Rogers Field where Kenny Loggins, Danger Zone, is echoing over the speakers. That means one thing, Weston Bailey is entering the ball game to take over for Cooper Timmons. Timmons is going to depart in line for the loss after giving up six earned runs in six innings of work. And Bailey, just a, another addition to what is a talented underclassman group in the Tiger bullpen this year, alongside other players such as Kaiser Smith, who has been a very deadly midweek option for the Tigers. Weston Bailey, you've probably heard him a few times if you've watched the Roar Rundown podcast right here on OSDN. He is one of three hosts on that program, along with Chris Gay and Zach Cloud. Certainly a rising star in the Rogers Department of Communications here at Washita Baptist University. Also did some work with ESPN Radio up in Hot Springs, covering Hot Springs Trojans games in the offseason. But right now, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, will look to keep the score right where it is so Washita can try and mount a comeback He's set to face off against 4, 5, and 6 for SAU, starting off with the cleanup bat, Will Richardson. That one misses up for a ball. The 1-0, swing and a miss for a strike. That's a slider on the outside corner. Going to have time called here. Empire was indicating something to Weston Bailey, although we couldn't quite tell what it was. The 1-1 one, one pitch popped up, drifting out to right field. Bolin charging in, and it is going to fall in no man's land. In that dreaded Bermuda Triangle of defenders for Washita is now SAU is up to 13 hits, and that one was quite unlucky for Washita's defense. Just the first victim of the sun there with, both, like you said, a Bermuda Triangle of players just being unable to see it due to the absolute, just the beating down, inter, beating down rays of the sun today. 
Bailey's first pitch misses outside. This one's going to miss down. Another breaking ball from the Texas native. He's going to have to be careful here in a 2-0 count. Talented batter, wind blowing out to left field. As that pitch runs high for ball three. Jaden Woolbright looking to work a walk. He's going to have to wait a little bit longer. That one's taken for a strike. The 3-1 pitch. Hit out to third, takes a nasty hop off of the third base bag. That's going to be through for extra bases. G. Allen with a good relay in. Unfortunately for the Tigers, that is going to be an extra base hit for Jaden Woolbright. His second hit of the ball game. As you can tell, the SAU dugout letting Washita have it today. Anytime the Mule Riders have had a big play or even a you know, small situation like Count Leverage, that visiting dugout has been fired out. That's a beautiful slider from Weston Bailey to start out the at-bat. Swung on and missed for strike one. Actually, it's a little bit of a curveball there. Going back to the curve again. This time it's going to stay a little bit up. Next pitch misses down and away. It's two and one. Two one misses outside for ball three. Looking to avoid the walk, the 3-1 pitch. Catches the outside corner for strike two. Shoup was already making his way down to first base, and he's going to tap on his chest saying, my bad. The payoff from Bailey, swinging a miss for strike three. And just when Shoup thought he had his way to first base, Bailey, two strikes in a row, gets the first out of the inning. That is Bailey's fifth punch out of the season as he was able to get Shoup to swing through the curveball for strike three. With one away, Carter Clairhout digging in. Going to start him off with the breaking ball outside for a ball. Trying to go with a little bit of change up action. The 1 0. This is low and inside, and it's quickly 2-0 and oh to the Mule Rider DH, who has been having an exceptional day at the plate. He's gone two for three. He's scored twice. Two zero, -oh. Beautiful comeback pitch. It's taken for strike one. Bailey going to that slider. He's got a good four-pitch setup. The 2-1, hit right back up the middle and through for a base hit. That will play to at least one. Second runner's got the green light. Here's the relay in. It goes right through the cutoff, man, but it doesn't matter. Throw is not in time. The Mule Riders plate two on Carter Clairhout's third hit of the day. It's now eight to one Mule Riders. And not a great way to start off the series here. Going down eight to one to the Mule Riders. Washita hoping that they can at least bring some momentum from this game into the next one in the event that they cannot come back. Still just one away in the inning. So plenty of room for SAU to do some damage as this is a good comeback pitch from Weston Bailey on the inner half. It's a strike. Come on, come on. 
the 0-1. Catches the outside corner for strike two. Again, Bailey trying to work that slider away from the right-handed batter in this righty on righty matchup. We'll see if he goes outside again. He does indeed, but this one dips a bit too low for a ball. Bailey actually switching things up a little bit with a curveball. The one two stays a bit up, and now it is two and two to the right handed bat of Mikey McGinnis, who would love nothing more than to do what he did back in inning number six. Two two pitch. Hit to the left side and foul. Score team is adjusting the count. It's a 2 2 count to McGinnis. And he's going to send one out to short and through for a base hit. Bermudez gave it the old college try but couldn't quite come up with the baseball, and now there are two runners on and still just one away for the next hitter, Clay Burroughs. That's going to be enough to inspire a mound visit from Coach Luke Howard, and given that there's nobody really warming up in the bullpen right now, looks like Bailey is going to be tasked with keeping this game in striking distance. Well, this Chase, this mule rider offense has been giving, has been giving it all to the Washington defense, just a just a lot of fa like infield plays that have been a little messed up on and things like that, and so it's going to be it's they're going to need to clean up on these if they want to mount a comeback or going into the next game today they're going to need to clean up on that because of it being a three game series, you know this is just the first of many. So now we will see Clay Burrows at the dish. SAU has certainly been playing with a chip on its shoulder here today, and that's likely a result of experiencing what was just the second sweep of SAU baseball in the GAC era last weekend in Shawnee against Oklahoma Baptist. Isaac, when you consider that the GAC started back in 2011, that's a lot of baseball to be swept just twice. Well, SAU is has shown that they have been one of has been one of the top programs in the GAC since that time, and so um, just yet again, um, Oklahoma Christian Oklahoma Baptist making history with that because of Southern Arkansas's pedigree of you know being a winning program since then. Here's the first pitch to Chris Lyles. It is taken low and outside for a ball. Now this SAU dugout just as loud in inning number seven as it was in inning number one. Lyles is looking to make this a four hit day. He has certainly been a tough out for the Tigers up to this point. Bailey continuing to try and work that outside slider against a right-handed batter. We'll see if he goes back there again. This time, switching things up, going on the inside. Home crowd loved the location. The umpire did not. That's ball two. The 2-1. Giving a solid ride out to center field, but Heine's going to take a few steps back and make the routine play for round number three. So SAU will strike for two more runs to extend its lead to seven. It is stretch time here at Brad Rogers Field, and Washita will certainly be looking to get more runs when we come back. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. 
Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have your seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Nothing has changed out there on the mound for SAU as Jeremy Adorno assumes the position on the bump. And Isaac, can you blame SAU for wanting to go back to Adorno at this point? He has already matched his efforts from the first time he pitched here at Rob Rogers Field in 2022. Just one run allowed in six innings. He's got a chance to best that here today. And yes, with Adorno, just a spectacular performance today. He, he, Like you said, he has a chance to end today just with one run allowed if the Tigers cannot pick up their offense just a little bit. You have to wonder how much longer Adorno can stay in the ballgame as he is nearing triple digits. We said it before the game started. Adorno is one of those guys that is capable of throwing a gem at any given time, and he has certainly given SAU that here in game one, taking a red-hot Washtenaw lineup and silencing them. The only run to come across was G. Allen back in the last inning, and that was on a fielder's choice hit by Weston Bailey, or excuse me, Wes Scott. Meanwhile, it is an 0-2 count to Colin Lyles. The 0-2 locks him up on the outside corner for strike three. Adorno continuing his dominance, although he hasn't been overwhelming with the strikeout stuff today. That's just his fourth punch out of the ball game. Well, Adorno there showing that with triple-digit pitches can still be lethal on the, up on that mound. Recorded that last strikeout on the century mark pitch of 100, and he's already ahead in the count against Joseph Bolin. It's 0-1. The next pitch... Good breaking ball that just does miss the inner half. That's ball one. Adorno kicks and fires. He's hit out to short, backhanded by Nickel. Throw over to first. Is there in time. A little bit of a scoop there for Will Richardson at first, but nothing too difficult as it was a great setup there from the hot corner by or excuse me, from shortstop by Nickel. And with two away in the inning, Kieran Terrio set to dig in. Terrio is 0 for 1 on the afternoon. He was hit by a pitch in his last plate appearance. This time he's going to give a half-hearted attempt at a swing. Couldn't hold it up in time. That's strike one. Oh, one pitch and a beautiful spot down in the zone. It's now 0-2 and, and Adorno looking to make it a 1-2-3, bottom of the seventh inning. Can Washita provide some resistance? Jammed him right back to the pitcher. Adorno going to jog over, flip it over to Richardson for out number three. It is another 1-2-3 inning for Jeremy Adorno and he is going to get a hero's welcome Back to the SAU dugout. And Chase, that's been the story of the game for the Tigers today, just been, being unable to put their bats to the ball. So as we head to the eighth inning, your score is Mule Riders 8, Tigers 1. Grant Rosemo will look to join the hit parade when we come back. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Whether you realize it or not, you see the work of bats and signs all around Arkadelphia. When you see the Badger equipment trailer on the way to a Badger game, bats and signs did that. 
When you're watching the Badgers, Tigers, or Reddies and see the signage that just really makes their facilities pop, Bats and Signs did that too. You see the signage in downtown Arkadelphia on the campuses of Washita and Henderson or the sign in your neighbor's yard supporting a candidate or their favorite Badger? Yep, Bats and Sign did that too. Longtime residents and supporters of all things Arkadelphia called Mark, Jared, Chris, or Ryan at Bats and Signs today to see what they can do for you. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Weston Bailey back out there on the mound for the Tigers and he is set to face off against Grant Rosema, the last man to not join the hit parade today for SAU. Every other player in the starting lineup has recorded at least one base hit. He wants to join that list. Lyle's going to field it, flips it over to Bailey and Rosma is going to be retired for out number one. So Rosma has not joined the hit parade, Isaac, but it is worth noting that he has joined the on-base parade with a walk. Every mule rider in this starting lineup has reached base safely at least once today. This one's skied over to the right side, but should be playable for Colin Lyles. He's going to be called off by Wesley Scott, who makes the play in foul territory for round number two. We're seeing a bit of we're seeing a bit of maturation in this wa uh, this Washita defense as they did make a couple early mistakes, but now they're finally being able they're finally able to make the more tough plays. You know, earlier losing the ball in the sun, but here um, getting over and getting that out in foul territory with the sun in their eyes. First pitch of the new at bat is taken on the inside corner for a strike. Will Richardson, the man at the plate for SAU, he's going to hit the 0-1 pitch foul over to the left side. Saw that last one pretty well. And now he's going to have to battle up in a two-strike count. Bailey fires in another breaking ball, his third straight. And it's now one and two. The one-two. And it's now two and two. The next pitch popped up out of play over to the left side. So Richardson has earned the opportunity to see at least one more pitch here from Bailey. The sophomore looking for a 1-2-3 inning, the 2-2. Two -two. Beautiful location, but can't get the call. That's ball three. Went with the slider outside, and it stayed outside. Here's the payoff pitch. Takes it for ball four, just missed that lower outside corner again. Jaden With a runner on first, we will now see the bat of Jaden Woolbright. First pitch catches the zone, or actually misses the zone for a ball. The 1-0, similar spot, better result. It's now 1-1 one one to the five-hole hitter for the Mule Riders. Still trying to work outside against the right-handed bat of Woolbright. It's now 2-1. It's 
It's been a battle today on the mound for the Tigers as the 2 1 pitch is going to catch the outside. And now it is 2 and 2. We'll see if. Bailey stays outside or maybe tries to go inside to lock up the right-handed bat. That's exactly what he does as this one dips a bit too far down and it's now three and two to Woolbright. We'll see what the third baseman does here on a full count. Two outs, runner will be in motion. Here's the pitch. Let's hit back up the middle. Bermuda scoops it up, no play at second, but he does throw it over to Lyles at first for out number three. No runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left on base for the Mule Riders here in the top of the eighth. Tigers will be looking to rally when we come back. You're watching Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law and SAU just wanted to stick with what works. Jeremy Adorno is back out there on the mound for the Mule Riders looking to make it eight innings of one run ball. And SAU has a pitcher in the bullpen if needed, but they're looking like they want to ride it out with Adorno right now just because of his spectacular performance today. Even way over, even just a bit over 100 pitches today for him. Looking at Adorno's numbers this season, he is currently just one third of an inning shy of tying his season high for innings pitched in a game. That was his last time out in a losing effort against Oklahoma Baptist. He was tacked with the loss in that one after allowing four earned in seven and a third innings of work. He has only worked seven or more innings in two outings this year, but those are his last two outings. So he has kept that streak alive with his third straight here today. This is a guy that has continued to look better and better as the season goes along, much more like the Jeremy Adorno we expect. Dustin Bermudez is another player who has heated up as of recent. But like so many of his teammates today, he has been held hitless. This one is going to be fouled over to the right side. Washita only has three hits to show for their day. We do want to apologize if the picture is shaky for you at home as we do have fans sitting out there on the deck and it looks like there's quite a bit of movement going on right now out there. The 2-2 from Adorno hit out to third. Scoop, thrower to first is there in time. Score at five to three to start out the bottom of the eighth inning. And that'll bring up G. Allen. He walked in his last plate appearance before coming around to score. It's worth noting too that he scored without a single base hit. It was a wild pitch followed by a throwing error and then a fielder's choice hit into by Wesley Scott. First pitch is taken for a ball, 1-0 to the Tiger left fielder. Now a 1-1 count, much to the chagrin of the Tiger faithful here at Rab Rogers Field. That one also misses outside, it is 2-1.
2-1. Fastball catches the outside corner down for strike two. And now we are going to see three men on the right side of the infield. Nickel, the lone man, on the left side. The 2-2 locks him up on the inside corner for strike three. And G. Allen is heading back to the dugout as strikeout victim number five today for the Tigers. So it's officially a new season high for Jeremy Adorno as he has gone seven and two-thirds innings. And he's got a chance to make it a full eight if he can retire Wes Scott right here. Scott is 0 for 3, although he has the lone RBI of the day for Washita. That occurred on a fielder's choice back in inning number six, his last plate appearance. The 0 1 from the righty. Foul tipped over to the right side. Mikey Quinones, who is now batting an even 400 on the year, waiting on deck for the Tigers. The 0-2, a little bit of chin music there. Heater misses high and in for ball one. The 1-2 pitch locks him up on the inside corner for strike three. And Adorno fired up on his way back to the dugout, give him half a dozen strikeouts on the day. And we'll see if he gets to go for the complete game in inning number nine. As it stands, he has allowed one run in eight innings of work. And as we head to the ninth, your score is Mule Riders eight, Tigers one. This is Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Food isn't just fuel to live, it's fuel to grow. My family relied on public assistance to help provide meals for us. These meals fueled my involvement in theater and the arts as a child, which fostered my love for acting. The Feeding America network of food banks helps millions of people put food on the table. When people are fed, futures are nourished. Join the movement to end hunger, and together we can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Visit feedingamerica.org slash act now. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Jeremy Adorno finishing off eight innings of one run ball just moments ago. And now Weston Bailey looking to finish things off on the defensive side for the Tigers. They have allowed eight runs today to a Mule Rider lineup that has been humming to say the least. Eight runs on 16 hits and one error today for SAU. Just one run on three hits and no errors for the Tigers. Thank you to the Bill Riders. Left fielder, Chase Shoot. So we will see Trey Shoup do up at the plate. This one's sent out to third. Scooped up by Terrio. Throw over to first. Is going to get away from Colin Lyles. That's a great rebound there, Bo, by Wesley Scott backing up his teammate. So the leadoff man will go no further, but that is the first fielding error of the day for Washita. It's been an up and down, uh, an up and down game out at third base for Kieran Terrio today because you have he's had highlight plays such as the diving plays, diving plays he's had for uh, two outs, but then he's also had a couple errors out there. So it has been an up and down performance. Bailey fires it in, and that one is going to land in center field for a base hit. That is the 17th hit of the ball game 
for SAU and the reign of terror will continue for Carter Clairhout. Clairhout is now up to a four hit performance today against the Tigers. To say he's had an amazing day at a dish would be an understatement. His conference debut against the Tigers has been nothing short of remarkable. Bailey keeping an eye on the runner at second. The 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two. And now McGinnis is in the hole 0-2. Bailey looking to set him down, but it is hit to the left side foul. G. Allen's going to track that one down in left field and flip it over to a player exiting from the dugout for Washita. The 0-2 tried to lock him up on the outside corner, but it just missed for ball one. Although SAU is currently up on the scoreboard, Mule Rider's not wanting to take any chances. This team rarely takes its foot off the gas pedal, and that's a big part of why they have had so much success over the years. Bowen's going to make the play in right for out number one, and that will force the lead runner shoot to retreat to second. Second baseman, Clay Burroughs. So with one down, Clay Burroughs do up for the Mule Riders. Keeping an eye on the runner at second. Here's the first pitch. It's hit into right field and down for a base hit. Shoup has the green light. He's headed for home. Here's the relay in. It is cut off by Colin Lyles. And it is another RBI base hit for Clay Burroughs. Give him three ribbies on the day. And it is now 9-1 to one SAU with two runners on and just one away for the top of the order. Chris Lyles. Chris Lyles is 3-5 for five on the day and looking to join the four-hit club which has already been established today by Carter Clairhout. Lyles gets jammed a bit as this one is going to drift into shallow right field. Play is made by Joseph Bolin for round number two. Now back to the catcher, Grant Rosema. So now Grant Rosema, one more chance to try and join the hit parade. He is the only starting mule rider today who has not joined that list. Hayden Childers and Cameron Marchand just walked out to the bullpen. Also joining them is Ryan Armantrout. And it looks like he is gonna be the one to go ahead and get loose. The 1-0 catches the outside corner for a strike. All nine starters today for SAU have reached base safely at least once. But a hit right here would ensure that all nine also have a base hit. This one gets away from Quinones, jams his hand a bit as he tried to keep it in front of him, and both runners are going to move up an extra 90 feet into scoring position. golden opportunity for Rosma to add on some insurance if he can find the outfield grass. The 2-1 squared it up pretty well, but also hit out of play foul, and it looks like a ball has entered the field of play out behind Talon Heine, although now he's realizing it. He's going to drop it into his back pocket 
And this one squared up pretty well, giving a ride out to right field. But Bowen is going to drift over and make the play in the right center field gap for out number three. That was a tennis ball that had fallen onto the field from the tennis courts over there in right center field. Heine promptly returning the ball to its rightful owner. And SAU plates one more run to add on insurance here in the top of the ninth. It will be rally time for the Tigers when we come back, and they've got a tall task ahead of them. Your score, Mule Riders 9, Tigers 1. This is Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. I'm Sandra, this is Jorge, and we were adopted in 2019. I remember when they first came to us, Michael was already a teenager. The whole cliche of they're so lucky to have you guys, and it's no. the other way around. They have changed our family for the better. They chose to love us. They didn't have to. They chose us. Family. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Welcome back to Tiger Baseball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. And for the first time today, we are going to see a pitching change for the Mule Riders, that closes the book on Jeremy Adorno, but what a day it was for the junior. We wondered if he could match his efforts from the last time he was here at Rob Rogers Field. Instead, he decided to best them. Eight innings of one run ball, just three hits allowed. That one run came across to score on a fielder's choice. There were actually no hits that led to that run coming across to score. And now we're going to see Micah Burke take over on the mound for SAU. Burke, a junior from Corsicana, Texas. Formerly played at Navarro College before making his way to Magnolia. And he's got a decent task ahead of him here. He's got to face off against Mikey Quinones, Cade Burris, and Talon Heine. Quinones owns two of three hits today for Washtaw. In fact, that list that I just gave you, all three of those hits have come from the four, five, and six hole. The only other hit has been from Talon Heine, a double that proved to be the first base hit of the ball game. Back the Tigers. Look at, you. at least on the Washtaw side of things as Mikey Quinones digs in. Quinones going to take the first pitch. Breaking ball that stays in for ball one. Getting a rare lefty on lefty matchup right here. It'll be fun to watch as the second pitch runs high. That last heater makes this a 2-0 count now to Quinones who has singled and doubled up to this point today. He's also struck out once. The 2-0. Fastball catches the inside corner for a strike. The 2-1. Gives it a good ride out to center field. Lyles drifting back to the warning track. Had it had a few extra feet on it, it would have been home run number 10 of the year for Quinones. Instead, it's a loud out number one. Burris. Burris comes in this play appearance. 0 for 3 on the afternoon. This one is foul tipped into the catcher's mitt for a strike. Isaac, when our director, Chris Bow and I were talking earlier today, we thought that this might be a game of the home run today with the way the wind was blowing out to left field at the moment. Thus far today, there's only been one round tripper between these two teams. That was the two run shot off of the bat of Mikey McGinnis. And Chase, I think that has something to do with the pitching. With both Timmons and Adorno being quality pitchers in the GAC, 
Um, I'm sure that it has to do something with their ability to just put the ball in the right place and prevent what has been what we expected to be more of a slugfest. Well, you've also got to remember, too, these are the top two pitching teams in the lineup. You always wonder when you have great pitching teams but also great lineups how it's going to shake out. For Timmons, although he did a relatively good job at keeping the ball in the yard, meanwhile, this one might be leaving it to the warning track, to the wall. Touch them all, Tiger. That's a home run. Cade Burris with his sixth home run of the campaign. And the home run streak lives for Washita. Took the Tigers all nine innings to get a round tripper, but they do indeed get that long-awaited big fly to make this a 9-2 ball game. Still a lot of ground to cover in game one. But the Tigers can at least rest on the fact that their home run streak will live on to see another game. Burris also getting a little bit of revenge for that one ball that looked like it should have flown out earlier in the day. Meanwhile, line out to second for Talon Heine. Grabbed out of the air by Clay Burrows for out number two. And the last hope for Washita here in the bottom of inning number nine will be Colin Lyles. Lyles, 0 for 3 on the day. And Isaac, we have to update our home run count now to two, but still 11 runs have found a way to score, and that is because SAU, despite not having the home run ball to work off of much today, they found a way to produce runs while keeping the ball inside the yard, and that has been the key to success in this Friday opener. Also, we just got an update from SAU. Isaac, we saw quite a bit of celebration over there in the dugout for Jeremy Adorno when he departed on his last out, a punch out. If you can believe this, we had two school records broken today for career strikeouts. Jeremy Adorno setting a new SAU record for punch outs in a career. I mean, what are the odds of that? Two career strikeout records being broken by two quality programs in the same day, in the same game. Well, like you said, it's just a testament to these programs being quality every single year, year in and year out, with good pitchers like Timmons and Adorno to back them up. And then you see there today, you see here today, Adorno with uh, five with five strikeouts, just another great performance for him. The 2-2 hit out to right field, and that one will fall. Tigers are not done yet as Colin Lyles has the fifth hit of the ball game for Washita. So now Joseph Boland steps up to the plate with one away, or excuse me, two away and one on first. Burke. Trying to finish off this ball game for SAU and put the Mule Riders up 1-0 in the series. I'm sure the Tigers are glad that they do not have to see Adorno again. As he was firing on all cylinders today. Certainly a landmark performance for the junior. Capped off by a school record for strikeouts. Burke, keeping an eye on the runner at first, that's Lyles. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Hit back up the middle and that one's going to fall. So Washita showing off some fighting spirit here in the bottom of the ninth in, the sp in spite of formidable odds, Kieran Terrio is going to step up to the plate with two away and two on. Burke is going to get the signal from his dugout. 
Washita really making him work for this third and final out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Breaking ball taken for a strike. Terrio is 0 for 2 on the afternoon, but again, he was hit by a pitch. The 0 1 from Burke stays too far outside, and Lyles had a very dangerous lead that time. Had it gotten away, he would have been able to take third with ease, and who knows, Bolin probably would have moved up as well. The 1-1, Terrio just able to get a piece of it and foul it off to the right side. With that, Washita down to its final strike. Micah Burke looking to finish off what would be the 20th win of the season for SAU. That would make these two teams' records identical, at least in overall play, but it would give SAU a one-win lead in the GAC standings over the Tigers. The one-two pitch, Terrio reaches out, slaps it out of play. And again, Burke is really having to work here to try and retire any Tiger batter at the moment. Tiger third baseman doing his best to put up a fight and keep this game alive. The one-two, check swing that got a piece of him. They're going to flip it over to first. And they're going to say that's the ball game as he rules that a third strike. Meanwhile, we're going to have a meeting of the minds between the umpires to the left of the mound. Outfielders continuing to run in. Now Chris Lyles and the rest of his teammates. Now they will enter and the Mule Riders will run onto the field. Luke Howard wants an explanation because he thought that that got a piece of Terrio. Or at the very least, Terrio fouled the ball out of play. A strange ending to a strange game for Washita as SAU claims its 20th victory of the year. However, more importantly, the Mule Riders now have a one run, or excuse me, a one game lead over the Tigers in the Great American Conference standings. Chase, interesting development here. I don't see the Tigers coming out of their dugout at all to do post game handshakes. So there might be a little bit of bad blood right now following that really confusing out. Probably won't see those handshakes until game two. As now we're going to see Coach Howard go out and greet the skipper for the Mule Riders. A man who also has a history with Washtaw, Justin Pettigrew. He was a pitching coach right here in Arkadelphia before making his way to SAU, you heard. Steve Smith talk about him here. These are two programs that know each other well. And of course, it's a rivalry between these two squads. But also, there's a lot of friendships on both sides as well. So it's going to be a fun game, too, between these two teams. But we do want to give you the final results from this game. Your winning pitcher with his fourth victory of the year and a school record for career strikeouts in tow, Jeremy Adorno. Goes eight innings, allowing one run on three hits, and he struck out six batters. Cooper Timmons will be tacked with the loss. He also broke a school record for career strikeouts for Washita. However, he also allowed six earned in the 9-2 to defeat. On the offensive side of things for SAU, got to give a shout-out to Carter Clairhout. After striking out as strikeout victim number 314 of Cooper Timmons' career, he goes a perfect 4-4 four for four down the stretch to finish 4-5 for five with three RBIs and a double. He also scored twice. Also recording the lone round tripper of the game for SAU. It was the right fielder, Mikey McGinnis. On Washita's side of things, credit the two RBIs of the game, one of them to Wes Scott on a fielder's choice. He went 0 for 4 on the ball game. And Cade Burris 
recording a solo home run, his sixth of the year to finish off the day for the Tigers. So it's a disappointing start to the series for the hometown team, but there's still a half of this doubleheader left. We will have a seven inning game here in just about half an hour right here on OSDN. We just got the word that first pitch has officially been set for 4.05. So be sure to stay tuned to the OSDN YouTube channel for more Tiger baseball coming up here in just a little bit. Until then, this is Chase Hartzell signing off. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you in just a little bit.